On 9 February 2021, after seven months in space and six years since its inception, a room full of Emirati engineers watched anxiously as their mission of putting a satellite into orbit around Mars reached its final destination. The United Arab Emirates is just the fifth nation to send a spacecraft to the Red Planet. You're listening to Beyond the Headlines. I'm your host, Suhail Akram. And this week, we're looking at how the UAE's Hope Probe made history and put the country firmly in the global space race. In the height of the pandemic in 2020, when most of the world was shut down to stop the spread of the coronavirus, Emirati scientists were hard at work. On 20th July, the UAE's Hope Probe blasted off into space from Japan's Tanegashima Island towards its target. Its mission? To study the climate of Mars from the planet's orbit. What followed were seven anxious months of bated breath and special satellite maneuvers, culminating in the nervous moments of the evening of 9th February, when the world witnessed something extraordinary, the first Arab satellite entering Mars's orbit and promising to open up new frontiers for humankind. We spoke to Omar Abdul Rahman Hussain, lead mission design and navigation engineer for the Emirates Mars mission, who explained just what was at stake. So uh, we're going to talk about the MOI, which is one of the most critical phases for us in the mission. Um, its equivalency is uh, it's as important as launching the mission itself, since uh, that maneuver allows us to get captured by Mars. So what we're going to do is that we're going to slow down the spacecraft from going around 100,000 kilometers an hour down to 18,000 kilometers an hour. So the problem also we're going to face when we are there is that we have two-way communication time of 11 minutes, meaning well, whatever we do, we are 11 minutes behind. So it's a little bit unnerving for us since, of course, we don't have the time to uh, fix a command, like to send a command or something like that. That's why we have all of the contingencies and everything built already into the spacecraft so that we don't have to uh, basically interact with it during this very critical period. And this critical period is going to last around 28 minutes, around half an hour. Omar is talking about those critical minutes of a blackout when the Hope Probe was on its own. And in those minutes of anxious blackout, anything could have gone wrong. Overshoot and Hope would go straight past Mars, slow down too much, and the probe would crash land on the planet. There were risks of the probe's thrusters not firing at the right time, or failing entirely, or going off course, or missing the target orbit and doing a flyby instead. But Hope defied a 50% risk of failure to enter the orbit and its lonely 493.5 million kilometer journey through space turned out to be a spectacular one. At 7.30 p.m., it fired its thrusters and used half of its 800 kilogram of fuel to slam on the brakes and cut its speed from 120,000 kilometers per hour to 18,000 kilometers per hour. It was a spectacular feat of engineering. As a result of the distance between Earth and Mars, engineers in Dubai waited at least 11 minutes for the message confirming the thrusters worked. The six thrusters fired for about 30 minutes in all. During that time, all contact was lost as scheduled when the probe disappeared behind the red planet. Then came the signal, success. Here is Hamad al-Hazami, command controller of the Hope Probe. This is a huge honor for us as UAE citizens to write an important page in this country's history, even for the next 50 or 100 years. The responsibility is huge as well. So with great honor comes great responsibility as well. As far as being nervous, I am not nervous for one reason. I have full faith uh, in my colleagues uh, and their design and their work. And I have uh, full faith in our systems. And we've practiced this for many times, to be honest. So it just feels like another activity that we are going to rehearse or uh, be a part of. This is how much uh, we've worked hard on this project. So it, it just feels like another activity. And I'm, I'm sure and confident that once this is over with, uh, we are going to be proud and happy of what we achieved. We spoke to Sarvat Nasser, the national news reporter who has covered all the space-related developments in the UAE. 
She watched the orbit attempt from a special event in Dubai. So the mood on on the ground was there was tons and tons of I think anxiety in the beginning when you know Emirati ministers, influencers, and uh, journalists and the world media arrived at Burj Park, um, only because they were hoping that the signal that confirmed orbit entry would come as expected. Throughout the event, when uh, Sarah Lamiri, the Minister of State for Advanced Sciences and Chairwoman of the UAE Space Agency, was giving a regular updates on stage, she was there. But the uh, mission director, who's actually leading the mission, was in mission control at Mohammed Rashid Space Center in Al Khwanij, Dubai, uh, with uh, the rest of engineers who were tracking the mission. Um, he was providing live updates through a screen that was at Birch Park, but uh, Sarah Alamiri was there uh, with with the rest of the journalists at Birch Park. There was definitely excitement. There was nervousness. But I think when the signal confirming orbit entry came and uh, Umran Al Sharaf actually congratulated the Arab world, that was such a historic moment, and the crowd basically erupted in you know a round of applause. Um, there was hugs being exchanged. There was so much cheering. There were Emirati influencers who sort of just went up to the stage, started taking pictures. Obviously, a lot of selfies. They wanted to be part of that historic moment as well. And overall, uh, the vibes were, were just fabulous. Right after uh, that great piece of news came, the Burj Khalifa was was the backdrop of the event at Burj Park. It was lit up throughout the evening. And obviously, it also projected the faces of the engineers that have worked on the mission for over the past six years. Sarvath also talks about how the UAE officials made sure the pandemic didn't hinder all the hard work that the Emirati scientists had put in place for the Mars mission. I think, from a reporter's perspective, it was interesting because I remember covering it in 2014 when the mission was first announced, and back then. Uh, we didn't know that a pandemic was going to hit the world at this stage. There were many questions placed if the mission would go on by journalists, of course. Uh, but the Space Center was very clear that the mission will go on. There's absolutely no delay. And there wasn't. Uh, even though there was a pandemic, uh, you know, a few engineers traveled to Japan uh, to make it happen. They spent so many days in quarantine, uh, like um, you know, all the other travelers have to do during a pandemic. And they came out in time and they the spacecraft was ready. And then they, you know, the liftoff was delayed a couple of times because of uh, the unstable weather in Tanigashima. But overall, I think it went well. And um, honestly, the mission has gone really smoothly, even though there was a pandemic all the way from, you know, the mission announcement in 2014 to the liftoff. Um, and then making sure that the seven month journey, which is so intense, there are so many challenges during that seven month journey. You never know. There's so many technical issues. And then there's the danger, the risks of outer space that could damage the spacecraft. That went well. The course maneuvers went well. And then they entered uh, orbit successfully, too. So this is a huge accomplishment, honestly. With this feat, the UAE has become only the fifth to do so after the US, Soviet Union, Europe and India. The Hope probe will be the first probe to provide a complete picture of the Martian atmosphere and its layers. It promises to help answer key questions about the Martian atmosphere and the loss of hydrogen and oxygen gases into the space over the span of one Martian year, which equals 687 Earth days. But it's not just a scientific mission. The UAE's Hope Probe has other aspirations too. With it, the country aims to drive innovation in space and technology, inspire a new generation of Emirati youth, and diversify the economy beyond its dependence on oil. Here is Sarvath again. I think there has been generally a lot of excitement only because the UAE's sort of space initiative started, really kicked off, I think, when the Emirati astronaut went into space and then reaching Mars was something, another very difficult task that they wanted to achieve. So you can kind of see a shift, I I would say, in youth um, where they're more actively talking about space. You know, I speak to educators as well. Uh, people, uh, educators, academics in universities who are talking about the interest in STEM subjects. So I think that has shown how, uh, what kind of a positive impact the uh, Mars mission has created. Not just yesterday when the main events were taking place, but so many months before, uh, because there has been so much engagement from the Emirates Mars mission team in schools, because not they haven't only been spending their time at the Space Center working on the spacecraft and uh, tracking the probe, 
but they've been a part of their team have been actually going to schools letting students and pupils know more about the mission and educating them on not just what the UAE is doing but what's so interesting about pursuing space and STEM subjects the UAE's mars mission is a major milestone in the country's space program but it's not the first one on september 25th 2019 Hazar Al Mansouri became the first Emirati man to go to space after the mission took off from Baikonur, a Russian cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The UAE has set itself some steep learning curves. In March 2019, Arab countries met in Abu Dhabi and formed a pan-Arabic space organization. The first project it will undertake is satellite 813. It's named after the year the House of Wisdom was founded in Baghdad. The House of Wisdom was a grand library that signaled the dawn of the golden age of Islam, an explosion of science, culture and learning that would last 600 centuries and draw knowledge from all over the world. In September last year, the country said it also plans to send an unmanned spacecraft to the moon in 2024. It will be called Rashid, in honor of Sheikh Rashid bin Said Al Maktoum, the late father of the ruler of Dubai. The 10 kg Emirati rover will carry two high-resolution cameras a microscopic camera, a thermal imagery camera, a probe and other devices to study the lunar surface. If successful in 2024, the UAE could become the fourth nation on earth to land a spacecraft on the moon after the US, the Soviet Union and China. But right now the focus is the Mars mission. Now successfully locked in the Martian orbit, scientists will now try to assess the right opportunity to train its cameras on the red planet. Here is Mohsen Alwahdi, mission systems engineer of the Hope probe. I think it will be just assessing the the timing and assessing the spacecraft's health and then just taking the right uh, opportunity to get the best shot that we can get. Keeping in mind that during the capture orbit, the closest we get to Mars is a thousand kilometers away, which will be the closest we will ever be because after that the science orbit is about 20,000 up to 42,000 kilometers away. So the 1000 kilometers away from Mars will be um only during the capture orbit so that's a really great opportunity for us to be able to take some photos but we still we are not saying where we will take the photo yet it will be based on some assessment that we will do later on once we are in a good place and then we can start thinking again about okay what's next let's see where is the best place to take some photos with the happy spacecraft there is a lot of first time in this mission keeping in mind that this is fully developed versus um heritage spacecraft so this is whatever we do with the spacecraft is done for the first time hope is now orbiting mars as close as 1000 kilometers from the planet when closest and goes out to almost 50000 kilometers over the course of the next few weeks this will be brought down to 22000 kilometers by 43000 kilometers orbit and it's already leading the way for others On 10 February, China's Tianwen-1 orbiter will try to do the same braking maneuver so that it's also captured by Mars's gravity. And then on 18 February, the American Perseverance rover will try to reach the surface of Mars. Here is Sarvath again. It feels like that the Islamic golden age is coming back because we remember in the medieval ages when Arab science was really leading the way with science and writings and art and medicine. and there were so many articles that came out many many years ago saying why did uh, the arab world leave science and turn away from science and we remember sheikh mohammed saying that you know um he had a goal of returning the region to the islamic golden age and you know you can kind of see that returning because there's such an extreme focus not just on science but tech ai and uh, we can see the uae leading the way in the arab world in that direction and i think other countries in in, in the region are definitely following um and learning from the uae as well thanks this week to sarwat nasir mohsin al wahdi hamad al hazmi and umar abdur rahman hussain this podcast was produced by aisha khan and arthur edison if you like this episode of beyond the headlines please subscribe and leave us a review I've been your host Sohila Kram.